Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, hey, look out! Hey, where do you think you're going? Now, oh, wait a minute. I've been parked here for five minutes. You backed your cab into me. Oh, well, wise guy, yeah. So you want to get tough about it. I got a mind to push your face in. If there's any face pushing to be done, perhaps we'd better step out here on the sidewalk. Oh, now, wait a second, boss. Do I look completely nuts? I should pick a fight with the guy six feet tall? Honest, you don't look so big sitting in the car. Them cars are sort of deceiving. You still think I bumped into you? Okay, boss, okay. I bumped into you. I just made a try at passing the buck. <laughs> You can't blame a guy for trying, huh? <laughs> there you go, Troll. Break it up. Get moving. Everything's under control, officer. This kind taxi driver just thought I needed to push. Oh, he did, did he? Well, you come back here, young fella. Where do you think you're going? Who, me? Who, who do you think I mean? That's your car, ain't it? Yes, I'm meeting someone here. I, I have to wait. Oh, you're waiting for someone, eh? Everybody is waiting for someone until my back is torn and then they're off. And I got a park car to my beat. You see all them cars? There seems to be quite a few of them. I had a hard time finding space. Oh, you had a hard time finding space, did you? Well, they were all waiting for someone, and now they've got someone waiting for them. Every last son of them is going to get a ticket. But I'm really waiting for someone. Here she comes now. You, David, David. Hmm, looks like somebody was telling me the truth for a change. David, has something happened? What's this policeman about? Have you been run over or anything? Yes, people who get run over always get up and argue with the police department. David, you oughtn't to argue with policemen. It's bad luck. That's right, miss. He was arguing himself right into a three-dollar parking ticket. But since you're such a nice young lady, I won't give him one this time. Oh, thank you, officer. See what I did for you, David? Now, wait a minute. If you hadn't have been late in the first place... I'm not late. What time is it? Ten minutes past four. My watch says twenty past. Then by your own standards, you're 20 minutes late. Oh, now, look, you two, do me a favor, will you? Get off me beat. Take a drive around the park and fight it out. 10 minutes past 4, 20 minutes past 4, half past the booby hat. That's just what we plan to do, but we have to go into this store first. Listen, Claudia, you can't park on this block. But silly, of course we can. Who says we can't? I says you can't, miss. The law says you can't. The law, poof. Look at all those cars. And Claudia, the law is one thing you can't say poof to. You said a mouthful, buddy. Come on now, now. Don't argue. Oh, I've never heard of such nonsense. What does the law expect us to do? Take the car into the shop with us like a Pekingese? <laughs> like a Pekingese. That's a good one. What store do you have to go into, miss? The jewelry store. The jewelry store? What? Why didn't you say so in the first place? Ah, oh, no, isn't that sweet? Go ahead and I'll stand out here and watch your car. And take your time, take your time. You only do it once in a lifetime. Oh, thank you, officer. Hey, uh, buddy, come here a minute. Hmm? Listen, you don't argue with your girl before you get married. <laughs> it ain't smart. But I, I'm, I... You want to fight, so save it up till after you're married. Then she can't walk out on you. Get smart, get smart. David, hurry! What was he talking to you about? Why did he change his mind so suddenly? What is there about you that makes people call you buddy? I'm ingratiating. People like me. Look, he's just a sentimental cop. A boy and girl in front of a jewelry store add up to love and an engagement ring. But we can't let him think it, it's dishonest to let, just to get out of a parking ticket. May we I help you, miss? Yes, please. You fixed my mother's watch a week ago because it lost five minutes. And now it doesn't go at all. Uh, may I see it, miss? Yes. I put it right on top of the dresser this morning so I wouldn't forget it. Wasn't I smart? Well, where is it? The jeweler wants to see it. On the top of the dresser. Well, anyway, you didn't forget where you left it. I'm sorry, miss. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Nothing else. <gasps> David, look. 
our brass button Cupid smiling at us through the window. Oh, now he'll know that it, it wasn't true about us. What wasn't true about us? That we aren't engaged in buying a ring. You know, I don't think he'd be so romantic if he knew we were an old married couple. Of uh, six weeks. Uh, just a moment. Uh, yes, sir? We'd like to look at some engagement rings. Engagement rings? Certainly. David, stop. You mad? A parking ticket's a very serious matter, Claudia. The price of leaving this store without a ring will be a summons for that lovesick cop out there. How much is a ticket? Three dollars for the first offense. Getting Mama's watch fixed is going to be pretty expensive. If you'll just step over to the counter, please. We have a wide selection to choose from. David, call him off before it's too late. It's too late. And don't you remember? We got married too quickly for you to have an engagement ring. You said you'd prefer my wristwatch. I did. I still do. Something of yours. Very pretty sentiment. Well, I never saw so many rings. That's a nice one over there. Uh, there? No, no, to the right. Th there? No, no, to the left. There? Yes, that's the one. You have a very discerning eye, sir. That's one of the most perfect diamonds we have in the house. David, are you crazy? Could be. A ring like that would cost a fortune. For the girl I love, nothing is too good. The girl you love would rather have a new set of pots and pans. That's a very nice ring. Uh, how much is it? Thirty-six hundred. Thirty-six hundred for just a diamond? That's ridiculous. Diamonds are expensive, madam. That's what makes them so rare, or should I say it, the other way around. David, I didn't know it cost so much money to fall in love. <laughs> Look that funny. What's funny? The smaller the stone, the bigger the setting. Uh, how, how much is, is that one there? Eight fifty. Only eight fifty? Eight hundred and fifty dollars, madam. You know, I was a fairly inexpensive bride, as brides go. And and how much is that one there? A hundred and twenty dollars, miss. What are you doing, taking inventory of his stock? Hush up. How much is that one over there? Oh, you mean that little one over there? Uh-huh. Seventy-five dollars. But, of course, it's a very small stone. Do they still call them diamonds when they're that small? I think it's lovely. I like small things. Not small men, though, of course. We have other rings at various prices. Uh, sir, how about a pearl? No, no, no. An engagement ring has to be a diamond or nothing. Well, this particular one is so small, it's both a diamond and nothing. Don't be silly. It sparkles. Oh, oh. here's our Cupid. Don't worry, your car's all right. I've been watching it. I just came in to see how you're getting along. Say, is that the one you picked out? It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, that it is. Oh, that's a darling ring. A <laughs> darling ring. Uh, hold it up a little more. Maybe you can see the diamond. Say, what's biting you? I agree with the little lady. That's a beautiful diamond. It ain't what it cost, buddy. To a woman, it's the idea of the thing. So you make a lot of dough in five or ten years and get her a rock the size of your fist. Okay. Anyway, she'll always like this one best. <laughs> Say, will you look at that dumb driver? Excuse me, please. Oh, I hate to take it off. Darling, you don't mean you want that miserable little ring. It isn't a miserable little ring. It's a wonderful ring. I didn't know how much I... David, could we afford it? Well, of course we can afford it, but I'd rather get you something really nice. There so... isn't any nicer ring anywhere than this. David, I know you'll think it's silly, but I, I didn't realize until now just how undressed a bride can feel without an engagement ring. <laughs> you little sentimental idiot. I'm afraid, sir, that the young lady really does seem to prefer this one. You'll take a check, won't you? Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, ring is $75, without the tax, of course. Two, David, we're saving three dollars on a parking ticket. You home, Mama? Mama, are you home? Yes, I'm home. And why must you always call me as if I'm deaf? Did you stop at the jewelers? Yes, Mama. What? Yes, Mama. I mean, yes, Mama. But well, now that we've got all the mamas out of the way... Did he tell you what was wrong with my watch? No, he didn't. Uh, well, did Mama. He, did he tell you when they could return it? He didn't say that either. Mama. Mama. <laughs> did you ask him? She forgot, Mama. Sometimes I think she'd forget her head if it wasn't firmly attached. Aren't you just assuming that it is firmly attached? Yes, I'm optimistic. Well, I suppose they'll let me know when it's ready. I certainly miss not having a watch. Make Claudia lend you hers as punishment. Wait a minute. By the way you're acting, I bet you didn't even go to the jewelers. Oh, but we did. We can prove that we did. Then prove it by telling me about my watch. Oh, your watch? It's perfectly safe. 
I was worried about his keeping time, not about its safety. Knowing your daughter, you should have worried about that, too. You didn't drop it, did you? It was your grandmother's. Oh, no, I told you. I told you it was perfectly safe. It's in the safest place it could be. It's right on top of my bureau. I knew it. Claudia, stop waving your hand in my face. What's the matter with you? She's very obtuse, David, and a little nearsighted. She wouldn't have to be very nearsighted not to see that. Shh, David. Mama, hold out your hand and close your eyes. It isn't a baby turtle or anything. <laughs> she did that with a baby turtle once, David. Well, this isn't a baby turtle. I shot now. Don't cheat. Right one, too. There. There what? There on your finger, you silly woman. Oh. Oh, that. Where'd you get it? In a box of popcorn? David, isn't she the limit? No, we got it at the jeweler's. What for? Did he give it to you as a souvenir for forgetting my watch? Oh, what a letdown, David. You go and spend your hard-earned money buying a wonderful ring, and she acts like that. Mom, I'm ashamed of you. Hand me my glasses. I am a little nearsighted, David. Why, it has a diamond in it. It has a wonderful diamond in it. They don't make any better diamonds. Or any smaller ones. It looks like an engagement ring. She says it looks like an engagement ring. You two imbeciles. It's really lovely on the hand. The wedding ring fills it out. Children, I shall treasure it to the end of my life. But, Mama, it uh, isn't... Claudia. It... Oh, David. Won't you ever get over the habit of interrupting your mother? David, I guess the women in our family run true to type. Claudia and you got married too quickly to bother about her engagement ring... Yes, Mama. And I suppose she told you that I never had an engagement ring either. We never seemed to think of it. Her father and I were too busy living. We had to cram enough joy and happiness into those few years to last a whole lifetime. And now, a long while after, I really get my ring anyway. David, you're very sweet. And you are a very wonderful old duck, Mrs. Brown. Now... Get into your best bib and tucker, and we'll all hop in the car and go out for a bite of supper. There's too much of me in your lives. You two go on alone. No nonsense, Mrs. Brown. You've been needing a little masculine authority for quite a while. Come on. A ring and a dinner all on the same evening? <laughs> I feel like a bride. Well, all right. Tonight I won't argue about it. I won't be but a minute. I'm... I'm sorry, darling. When your mother misunderstood... David, I... don't say you're sorry. Because what you did just now was the most beautiful gift in all the world. I'll get you another ring tomorrow. I don't need it. That was a wonderful ring. In one short hour, it made two people terribly happy. Three. Don't forget the lovesick policeman. <laughs> and someday, in maybe about 19 years, I'll get an engagement ring, too. If I'm lucky enough to have a son-in-law as wonderful as you. All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. To some of you ladies, shopping is fun. To others, it's a chore. But in either case, shopping is pleasanter when you shop refreshed. That's easy to do now that there's Coca-Cola waiting for you in the familiar red cooler at refreshment stands, lunchrooms, service stations, and food stores. When you do the family shopping, pause and refresh yourself with delicious ice-cold Coca-Cola on the way. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs> <laughs>